Howdy peeps. What do we have today? Well, it's not a how I do, it's not a review, it's not a build series. It's more something I've spotted, uh, not necessarily just of late, it seems to be a fairly ongoing confusion. Let's put it that way. Um, different kinds of paints, what they're described as and what they actually are um, different solvents different thinners you would use all that kind of thing mainly I hear things referred to and it's not just me we all hear it as an acrylic now this seems to be a coverall for it's an acrylic therefore it's a safe paint technically no. People hear acrylic and think water-based. Now, acrylics don't have to be water-based. They can be, you know, they can be water-based, such as with a Vallejo or VA hull or whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, the model color, the model air, the game air, the game color. The same goes with the MIG and the AK attacker. All those. Life colour as well, just looking around my bench, uh, Citadel, they're all water based acrylics, so they're as safe as you're going to get, but they have their limitations. Um, let, let's go with calling those an acrylic, based on like a craft paint, something along the lines of a... Deco art, that kind of thing. You know the craft paints you pick up from Hobby Craft or Michaels or Hobby Lobby if you're in the States. That's your basic water-based acrylic. The same paint-ish that you give to little kiddies to paint with finger painting all that stuff because it's not toxic, poisonous, dangerous at all. Then we come to things like Tamiya, which you might be able to read if it focuses. There we go. Tamiya Colour Acrylic Paint. Warning, flammable. Well, if acrylic paint is water-based, how can it be flammable? Because these aren't water-based, they're alcohol-based. It's still an acrylic. The um, easy way to tell for, I'm guessing, probably everyone other than me, is to just open a pot and sniff. You'll soon, <laughs> soon smell the difference. And that's a, a pretty good test for what kind of paint something is. And we also have the Mr. Hobby Aqueous. They are, eh, I'm not entirely sure. They may smell. Um, but these, no, there's Aqueous, water-based acrylic paint. Well, they thin perfectly with Mr. Leveling Thinner, which is a cellulose or lacquer-based thinner. Um, I've not actually tried thinning them with water, it'll possibly work, I'm not sure. But we'll stick with Tamiya as they tend to be a fairly industry standard. And Vallejo representing all those kinds. Next we move on to enamels. Um, and these are something that are kind of phasing out, not many people use them anymore. Main use for enamels these days is as a wash. And again, the actual paint itself isn't toxic, really. It, it's probably not best not to eat it, but you know, it's in the case with pretty much all of these, it's the actual solvent used. Uh, that that term can also cause confusion. Uh, people see something that says non-solvent based. And I'm thinking, hang on, water is a solvent. It might not be a toxic solvent. <coughs> Excuse me, it might be a perfectly healthy solvent. No, it's something we drink all the t every day, all of us. If we didn't, we'd die. We wash in it, we drink it, we put it in our food, everything. But, no, it is still a solvent. The solvent is basically whatever is used to turn the solid form of the 
or yeah, yeah, let's say solid form of the pigments, etc., into a liquid to turn it into paint. Yeah? The only real non-solvent based paints are the watercolour blocks you get because there's no liquid in them. The next flavour we come to are lacquers. And generally these are the nasties. Uh, put it in the middle of the shot might help. And this is a bottle of Alclad. I'm sure most of us probably have one or two of these kicking about. Probably a bit fuller and a bit cleaner than my one, but there you go. But again, these aren't self-explanatory. Because that it says Alclad 2 lacquers. So does that transparent red. But that's an enamel. Yeah. You can see where the confusion starts to come in. Um, you see it's... I mean, it doesn't actually say on the back of it anywhere it's an enamel that I can see, obviously. And it might be in the real small print, but I'm just reading through that. And no, it doesn't actually say anywhere it is an enamel. But it is. Um, now let's say... Oh, I do actually have some enamel paint. There we go, the AK Extreme Metal, which... Credit to AK, they have actually put on here, much like they do with their wash, high quality, I'll move it up a bit so you can read it, if it'll focus, 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 focus. There we go, high quality enamel based paints for airbrush. Yeah. But if you haven't quite got the eyesight to read that tiny writing, how do you tell that that is an enamel? How do you tell that that is an enamel, not a lacquer? The sniff test. Now, I'm only going by what I've been told. And I'm trying to remember, and it's quite early in the morning. So bear with me. Water-based paints won't smell of anything mm, nasty. They won't have a solvent smell to them. Obviously they have the solvent being water, but water doesn't smell as far as I'm aware. Things like the Tamiya. They have a an alcohol base. As you can tell when you buy the Tamiya, again, ex apologies for the state of the bottle. Tamiya acrylic paint thinner X20A contains isopropyl and butyl alcohol which gives you a clue as to what the solvents are in the paint it's probably going to be the same things yeah so it does just say acrylic paint thinner it doesn't no it's plenty of safety stuff but it's it can be a little confusing uh, and by the way I'm going to ramble th and go back and forth throughout this it'll probably be confusing even then but never mind <coughs> at least I'll have a, a stab at clearing things up so we were on to things like the Tamiya which you can th thin with water it will actually thin with water you can thin it with as I say the X20A or I tend to prefer if I'm going to use I'll use the Ultimate Thinner, which works with virtually all kinds of water-based and alcohol-based acrylic paints. Um, or you can thin Tamiya with Cellulose Thinner, like Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And you can tell by sniffing that it's going to smell really strong. Um, it's Tam, so the likes of Tamiya and the Mr. Hobby Aqueous. They're a good solid paint. You can thin them with pretty much anything and they just work. So they will have an alcohol kind of smell. Um, if you get the hand cleansers and the cleaning wipes, uh, cleaning wipes for your glasses, bins, they've got alcohol on them. 
so you know they clean it and then it all evaporates away and leaves you nice clean street free glasses that kind of a smell is what you'd expect to come out of a uh, an alcohol based acrylic. With an enamel such as the AK track wash or the extreme chrome or your humbrol tinlets, you know, the ones we all had as kids when we started because all these weren't available. Um, the little metal tins, they're enamels. Now they will s smell and usually thin with a white spirit or oh what do you call it in America mineral spirit that's it and apparently that has a kind of diesely smell to it so there's your clue with that one if you're not sure what kind of paint it is you can guess by sniffing and bad example using an enamel is as lacquer um, with the lacquers uh, they will just smell of as us in the UK call them cellulose thinners or as in the US and probably the rest of the world lacquer thinners and no. you can smell your way to the difference <laughs> excuse the pun um, if you're not entirely sure now the term acrylic you could probably call virtually all these different paint kinds an acrylic of some type. It's because generally what they mean by acrylic is the pigments and the binders used in the paint to create the actual colour rather than the solvent. Which is where you get issues with something being labelled as an acrylic and it's actually you. Yeah. Best bet, if you're not sure and from reading or or looking on Facebook or YouTube or what have you your best bet if you can't tell from the Smith uh, Smith the sniff test is to just take a bit of the paint oh, carnage crash bang and use an aluminium palette not a plastic one and just put a few drops of the paint one in each little uh, cup and try different thinners with them and see what happens as you'll find one what probably won't work at all um, now if you try and thin enamel with water mineral spirits being an oil based thing oil and water don't mix it won't you'll be able to see it's not worked right if it's a water based paint or an alcohol based paint it'll thin fine with water if it's a lacquer based paint and you put water in it, weird stuff happens. Um, and if it's a water, ba uh, water based, oh, try to remember the terminology so I don't mess it up. Polyurethane, like a Vallejo model Aries. Ta da, there's one I had sitting around for a while. Needs a bit of a mix. If it's one of those and you add minerals or uh, lacquer thinner to it it will just turn to snot and I've shown this before but this is what happens to a bottle of Vallejo model air paint that's the actual paint out the bottom of the bottle B bottle bottle I'll put my teeth back in again I'm guessing uh, it's either gone off but I doubt that I think what it probably did was it got contaminated with some uh, lacquer thinner because I was using this bottle at the same same-ish time as I was spraying some lacquer paints so whether some thinner got mixed or just the fumes got in there and you can see it is just totally set the polyurethane rubber <laughs> which is the binder it's just a solid block now if you put that in your airbrush and then you go and try and spray it it will just gum your airbrush solid and it will take an age to clean out and you will need to use full on cellulose thinners to get it out so I'm kind of hoping this hasn't been just a completely confusing ramble as, as I say it's still fairly early in the morning and this is something I've been thinking about on a, for a while 
on and off. But as I say, it's it's not necessarily down to the modeler that makes the mistakes. A lot of the time it is just down to poor labelling by the manufacturers. It's whether it's done on purpose, I don't know, to make people think that paints are safer than they are. I'm I'm not saying they're Warning, warning, toxic, toxic danger. Red alert, red alert, any of that. Um, obviously you don't really want to be sitting in a cloud of whatever it is you're spraying. But adequate ventilation, that kind of stuff will clear that. It's not an issue. But because acrylic has become the buzzword for a non-toxic paint, shall we say. Um, even that. You don't really want to breathe, well, I wouldn't want to breathe model colour or, or model air, let's say. It's thinned. Um, you wouldn't want to breathe that in. Yes, it may be water-based. The water vapour isn't going to do anything to your lungs at all. It'd be just be like walking out on a really humid day. But it's still going to have the pigments and the binders in it. And they're still going to end up in your lungs. So... No, it is vaunted as being safe, and yeah, if you're brush painting it, yeah. The worst you're going to get is if you forget and accidentally lick your brush, and then you'll taste it and you'll know straight away. Although model colour doesn't taste too bad, Tammy, it tastes foul. I will, <laughs> I will say that. It's something I, I know I shouldn't do. It's bad. But you're painting a figure, grab a figure for a example, here's Crazy Ivan with his polishing rag. Well, that's not even a paintbrush that is, there we go. You're painting away, your bristles lose their shape, but you just go, oh, hmm, stick it in your mouth, pick up a bit more paint. Yeah, yeah we've all been there, done that, I'm fairly certain. It's no difference accidentally dipping your brush in your coffee to swill it, clean the brush out. Um, but yeah, so just be aware of the kind of paints you're using. Um, a little research. If you're not sure, just put a question up on, say, ISM, Friday Night at the Bench. Critique group, story syndicate, whichever page you usually frequent. If you're not sure, ask. Someone might take the mickey. But hey, if you don't know, you don't know. It's not a dumb question. Um, and then you'll know. I would say wait for quite a few re re uh, replies. So you can gauge. Because there might be someone else who maybe has got things slightly confused I'm not going to say wrong because um, I don't think people get make mistakes on purpose so I'm just rambling now aren't I shall I carry on yeah let's go um, but yes it's I say try these things um, so if in doubt, try different thinners. Just just a drop or two of paint. You're not wasting much paint. I mean, especially in comparison to say you were spraying a model, and you didn't really know what thinner to use, so you just took a guess and mixed up to say thirty drops of paint, thirty drops of thinner to paint a little plane or something. Like sixty drops of paint. And yeah, I'd probably do a one seventy two, maybe a one forty eight. Um, and then mixing it up only to find you've just half, you know, 30 drops of paint has just turned to snot in your mixing cup. When if you'd have just done a little t test piece beforehand, you might have lost six drops. Uh, so it's, it's not a waste of paint to test it. And also, if you're using new products, new paints, new techniques, have a paint meal. All right doesn't have to be anything spectacular and it will look like an absolute dog 
there's a couple of mine. As you can see by the multiple colours and weirdnesses and I've had all sorts of experiments done on them just to see what works, what doesn't, what can be done getting different effects, all that kind of stuff try it on a spare you know? it doesn't have to be a good kit, you don't have to put it together properly I'm not sure one's a 172FX Spitfire and the other's the 172JUAE8 I believe, yeah which is a dog of a kit, don't buy that. Do not buy the FX JU88 in 172. Just don't. I know it's got a shiny new box and it looks really nice with the box art. Just don't. Uh, it's an absolute dog of a kit. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. But yeah. Test, experiment, try things out. If you're not sure, ask. And I think we're about there. Um, uh, the other thing I will add is I do see a lot of people like to use, I say a lot, uh, some people like to use sort of the Halfords or the Rusties or whichever brand just to spray can primer. Now there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's a spray can of primer. It's not necessarily the most efficient way of priming a model. And you've got to be a bit careful you don't end up with pooling because rattle cans being rattle cans, is, that's what's going to happen. Um, but using paints like those, which aren't necessarily designed for the hobby industry, you don't know what's in the paint. And you can have some really, really bad effects with it. Um, is you can spray say, one can of a primer and then spray a different make of a top coat uh, now another rattle, rattle can and you can have some really really bad uh, just reactions between the paints which just mean you have to completely strip the model and restart so you might save a little money but in the end I'm not even sure you would. I mean, obviously, if you haven't got an airbrush, fair enough. But if you have an airbrush, try and steer clear of rattle cans if you can. If you have to, decant the paint, let it gas off for 24 hours, and then run it through an airbrush. You have more control, far, far more control over how it goes on your model. But, so I use. And just because it's the closest bottle of hand. Uh, it's Badger Steinal Res. Ammo One Shot is exactly the same thing. As it will say on the back of the bottle. Here, made and bottled by Badger Airbrush Company in the USA. Right. So it is the same stuff. Goes down a dream, you know, 25 30 psi, depending on your needle tip size, you might need to go up a little more. Um, just spray it on, and it'll self level, it'll dry. Leave it as long as you need to. You can paint over it in less than an hour, that's not a problem. But if you need to sand it, or scribe it, or do anything like that, leave it maybe 12 24 hours, leave it overnight. There's no rush and let it fully cure and then it will be just as good if not better than the rattle can primers and it won't react with paints that are sprayed over it you can spray lacquers over it you can spray enamels you can put obviously water based acrylics spirit based or alcohol based acrylics over it not a problem it is brilliant stuff the white, mm, the white you do need to be a little more careful with. You need to spray it on in thinner, dustier coats. Because, but that's just the thing with white paint. Uh, white is just a pig. Which is why most of us don't build white models. Anyway, I've been rambling now for probably a little too long. 
If there was anything I didn't make clear, anything I got obviously wrong, which is probably more than likely, anything else you'd like to add, feel free to pop it in the comments down there somewhere, probably over that side a bit more. Um, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on what you thought. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. I won't say no. Uh, click that little bell thing and then that'll tell you whenever I put a new video up. But, so for now, enjoy your modelling. Rock on. Peace out. Have fun. Bye bye.